Welcome back to the course Elementary Electrochemistry. In the previous class, we have discussed about uh, how to measure the EMF of a cell and then from there, I have shown you how one can determine the uh, mean active ionic activity coefficient using the EMF measurements. So, today we are going to continue and we will now discuss a few important aspects on how a cell is constructed and uh, what, are, what are the meanings of some uh, uh, notations that I have been using over the last uh, few classes. So, today we will first talk about <coughs> uh, something called liquid junction potential. See, when we construct a cell, we use one line like this to separate the two solutions. And in some cases, if you have noticed, I have used uh, two lines to separate the two uh, compartments of a, an, uh, of a cell. So, for example, if I write zinc, Zn, uh, 2 plus aqueous one separation line with Cu 2 plus aqueous with one separation line copper writing it as plus and minus and writing the same uh, cell Zn Zn 2 plus aqueous with two lines here Cu2 plus aqueous and Cu plus. So, these two have a slightly different uh, meaning. So, when you write 1, it essentially means you have a semi permeable membrane which allows for the passage of ions from one chamber to other and that uh, creates a certain problem. So, that is that that is a junction between the two solutions and because of that junction being semi permeable the ions can move from one side to other, but then a problem arises because of that. <coughs> So, to have overcome that kind of the, the problem related to that uh, passage of ions uh, and making giving you an imbalance, one has to use something called a salt bridge. Which is written as a double line. So, a semi permeable membrane is written as a single line and a salt bridge is written as a double line. Why does it happen? Because the ions in the different compartments tend to diffuse through <coughs> the junction. diffuse through the junction and generate an imbalance. Why does that uh, imbalance is generated? Because the speeds of the ions present in the solutions are not same. <coughs> and as a result, the 
faster ions move more across the junction or moves faster so as a result one side of the boundary becomes positively charged and the other side slightly negatively charged so as soon as a charge separation takes place immediately and electrical double layer is established so what happens because of that double layer that the attraction of the two opposite charges prevents any <coughs> significant separation of the cations and the anions so as a result at the junction of the two electrolytes a potential is developed and this opposes the potential of the cell so this potential is called the liquid junction potential right so this liquid junction potential which is created inside the cell between the two uh, electrolytic solution cannot be determined using a potentiometer and it prevents the passage of ions at after it is generated uh, developed and hence hampers the electrochemical cell and it affects its uh, actual cell emf so to overcome this <coughs> one has to use something called a, a salt bridge this liquid junction uh, potential is uh, represented by this symbol so what we use is called a salt bridge so what we use is a saturated solution of KCl or NH4NO3 in between the two electrolyte uh, chambers so uh, there are different ways of making it you make an u shape uh, bridge filled with the saturated solution of kcl and sometimes 
some gel like agar agar is used to hold that saturated solution of kcl in this so this technically establishes the connect electrical connectivity between the uh, two solutions which are then connected with the corresponding electrode suppose this is copper this is zinc you have uh, zn2 plus here and cu2 plus here so like that when you have a, a salt bridge connecting the two sides then it uh, does not allow to the generation of uh, the charge separation because the <coughs> speeds of the cation and the anion present in the salt bridge has the same ionic mobility or ionic speed as a result the imbalance is not uh, created across the salt bridge so when uh, as i already indicated when the salt bridge is used then the corresponding cells are written like this as i have written for uh, zinc zinc 2 plus aqueous is in connection with cu2 plus aqueous with Z, uh, with cu as the electrode similarly one can have Zn in equilibrium with Zn2 plus in aqueous medium. Then on the other side, one can have 0.1 normal KCl solution, which is then in equilibrium with Ag2Cl2 solid and mercury uh, liquid, which is calomel electrode. So then again you have a salt bridge to eliminate the liquid junction potential that may develop between the two and <coughs> similarly one can also write another electrode just for example I am writing cadmium in touch with CD2 plus in aqueous medium is now in equilibrium with Fe2 plus Fe3 3 plus midi, uh, system in aqueous medium with a platinum electrode. So, in every case you have a salt bridge which eliminates the possibility of liquid development of liquid junction potential. So, for a salt bridge <coughs> the potential of liquid junction is 0 and it is thus eliminated. So, using uh, salt bridge we can uh, avoid a potential problem which get gen gets generated because of the variation in speed of the ions present in the two different compartments. So now we have already uh, discussed little bit about uh, different types of cells. One of them we now need to uh, pay attention is a cell which is called a concentration cell. As you know in general the EMF of a cell is a consequence of a net 
chemical reaction taking place inside the cell but it is also possible to <coughs> generate emf out of a cell without any net chemical transformation if such a cell can be constructed these are those are called the concentration cell why this happens this emf the emf of a concentration cell is a result of transfer of transfer of ions from one compartment to the other in the cell right so there are two types of such cells let us first talk about the amalgam cell where uh, two like or same electrodes are used with different activities and are dipped in the same solution containing an ion of the electrode material so what essentially means that if i just want to give an example silver amalgam with activity of silver as a1 is dipped in a solution of hgno3 and on the other side you have another silver amalgam electrode with activity of ag equal to a2 this is plus and that is minus so the reaction that is happening on the left hand side is ag getting oxidized to ag plus and releasing one electron what is happening on the right hand side is ag plus taking an electron getting reduced to ag so there is no net reaction if you add this there is no change in the chemical composition of the uh, electrode system so there is no net reaction in this particular cell but then when you write the cell emf 
you will write E left oxidation minus E right oxidation as we have learnt in the previous class and then we slowly write the corresponding Nernst equations then what you will get is E0 Ag minus Rt by F ln activity of Ag plus divided by activity of Ag that is A1 minus E0 Ag minus Rt by F ln A Ag plus divided by A2. So now you see that this A0 E0 Ag gets cancelled this minus a minus plus so we write rt by f ln a a g plus by a 1 minus rt by f ln a a g plus by a 2 and when you simplify you end up getting rt by f ln a2 by A1. So, here what we are getting is that the value of uh, EMF for this cell is regulated by the values of the activities of silver on either side. So, what is happening is there is a transfer of silver from left hand side to the solution of AgC AgNO3. So, Ag gets converted to Ag plus here and the Ag plus gets converted to Ag on the other side. So, there is a net transfer of silver from left to right and that transfer is controlling the EMF of the cell. So, that is why this is a concentration cell where the difference in concentration to gives rise uh, in the transfer of silver ion from one side to the other and it generates the corresponding EMF of the cell. The second type of concentration cell is a electrolyte concentration cell. So, here I am straight away writing one example so that you can understand easily. Suppose we have silver solid in equilibrium with AgNO3 aqueous with a molality M1 which corresponds to the activity of Ag plus as A1 it is connected to another solution of AgNO3 aqueous where the molality is M2 which means that activity of Ag plus on this side is A2 and you have again Ag solid as electrode right. So, here what we have is we have on the two sides we have the same electrode but we have solutions electrolytes of different uh, concentration. So, here both the electrodes are same, but the concentration of the electrolyte are different on the two sides or the two chamber of the electrodes. So, <coughs> when you try to write down the E cell like before, you will end up getting this expression E cell equal to RT by F. I am again writing F because again here it is one electron transfer. 
uh, ln activity of a2 by activity of a1 right here i uh, made a mistake you should uh, check see this minus so this is a2 and this is a1 as a result this should be a1 by a2 right so in this case you see the difference is that it is a2 by a1 so in the previous case the activity of the electrodes were different so in that case the e cell was determined by rt by f ln a1 by a2 that is a1 of, of the left by the right whereas in this concentration cell it is a2 by a1 if you do the derivation uh, yourself you will find it so now if a2 is greater than a1 e cell is greater than 0 that is positive <coughs> and that essentially means e l is greater than e r which essentially means oxidation occurs at the dilute side and reduction on the concentrated side that is dilute side is this so there the oxidation takes place and emf of the cell turns out to be uh, positive so if m and gamma terms denote molality and activity coefficients. So, now if we replace the uh, values for uh, a, a1 and a2 using m and gamma you can write E cell is equal to RT by F ln m2 gamma 2 by m1 gamma 1 or simply RT by F ln m2 by m1 plus rt by f ln m <coughs> gamma 2 by gamma 1. So, now by knowing the concentrations in terms of molality and by determining the corresponding gamma using the previous expression that we have learnt, one can calculate the E cell for the concentration cells. So, I hope you are able to follow these uh, uh, topics and we will continue from here in the next class where we will discuss about uh, different some more applications of uh, measurement of EMFs in practical life. Thank you.